Mr. Speaker, I feel hum humble as I rise to make yet another contribution on behalf of the people of Grosley to a budget debate. And Mr. Speaker, given the pronouncement made, I feel buoyed, feel excited, <laughs> revved up, ready to go, Mr. Speaker. Energized, Mr. Speaker. I feel like Victor Ledgers, our historic long distance runner, ready to go. And like Julian Alfred, the best sprinter this country has produced, sprinting away this year, Mr. Speaker, ready to bring gold home to the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I need to take this opportunity to remind the people of Grosely that never will I hide, never will I stay away from them deliberately. I'm not hiding. Sometimes you are buried under the mountain of work that was left undone by a predecessor in both youth development and sports and of course the largest constituency in this island, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, let me thank first and foremost the Most High for continuing to give me the patience, the mental fortitude, and the ability to deliver on behalf of my people. Let me thank my mom, Caroline Kazemi, the entire Kazemi family who's in the gallery today who has been there with me from day one, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me thank my father, Mr. Stephen Gustav and the Gustav family, who are loyal and devoted soldiers in this battle. Let me hasten to thank, Mr. Speaker, the SLPYO, the youth organization in Grosley, the SLPW, Mr. Speaker, the women's organization for the unwavering support for me, the Grosley Mayor and his constituency council for their work in the last year, and the office staff at Badawaj, Mr. Sharik Smith, Kelly Pierre-Louis, Nicola Duvay, Elva Flotten, and all the other staff working on the ground. Mr. Speaker, let me thank the Honorable Prime Minister who continues to bestow his trust in me and make the resources available for me to work on behalf for the people of Grosley. And so, Mr. Speaker, as I sat back and I listened to the presentation made by the Honorable Prime Minister on this year's estimates, I'm reminded of an axiom back in the day that postulates that if the opposition or any of his naysayers see this Minister of Finance walking on water, they will say it is because he cannot swim, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> While many in the region and in the world look at St. Lucia and understand the miracle of stability this Minister of Finance has brought to this country, his detractors will say it happened incidentally or accidentally, Mr. Speaker. But he is walking the walk, Mr. Speaker, and he is talking the talk, Mr. Speaker. Today, Mr. Speaker, there are a couple of things that are indisputable. For the first time since 1992, the St. Lucian economy experienced three consecutive years of economic growth above 3%, Mr. Speaker. For the first time, Mr. Speaker, since 1992. Our performance indicators reveal that the fundamentals of our economy are stronger than ever, Mr. Speaker and that with the prudent financial management we've seen over the last year, we are headed in the right direction, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, as the Minister of Youth Development and Sports, it is incumbent upon me to go through this budget and to indicate some of our, our accomplishments and to indicate some of our plans briefly as we leave the nitty-gritty for the policy debate, Mr. Speaker. And so, on page 665, Mr. Speaker, 174 on the head, 0408, 
I know this is a head that got every single parliamentarian excited, Mr. Speaker, because they saw rehabilitation of sports facilities. Every single one of them, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I must confess that I have 17 best friends, Mr. Speaker. All of a sudden, <laughs> 17, trust me. But they have others that want to come in. So, <laughs> but the speaker as well. Mr. Speaker, that are blowing up my phone day and night, night and day, for their facilities, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I'm even reminded sometimes, Mr. Speaker, of where I lay my head, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in ensuring that we bring reprieve to the 140 courts and the 90 playing fields that are on for Helen, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the budget and an estimate of about 12 million for infrastructural work, Mr. Speaker, and capital work, Mr. Speaker. It is an impossible task, Mr. Speaker, without the national lotteries and the Minister of Finance and his, his colleague from Ansari Canaries working to make it happen because every single constituency have in excess of six facilities, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am happy to announce that we are going to be giving facilities some serious attention this year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, while the Bellevue playing field, Crossover Park in Labry, Minda Phillip Park, Grosley, the Otabo Court, Mr. Speaker, are currently ongoing or complete, this year, Mr. Speaker, we will continue on, we'll carry on, and we'll give special attention, Mr. Speaker, of course, to the VG playing field, Mr. Speaker, a field that is a legacy playing field that requires individual training programs beyond the hours of 6 p.m., Mr. Speaker. The Grand Ravin playing field, Mr. Speaker, an area in our country that has been a rich repository of talent, Mr. Speaker, in the Mabia Valley. The lighting facilities, Mr. Speaker. The Philip Masterley grounds, Mr. Speaker. The breeding ground of some of, some of the best track and field athletes and footballers, Mr. Speaker. The Marsha Grounds, Mr. Speaker. Of course, we know of the history of Marsha in sports development, Mr. Speaker. The OJ playing field, Mr. Speaker, in the, the community of Labry, to be given the lighting that they deserve, Mr. Speaker, as they continue to develop their football program. And I was very impressed with their first showing at the semi-pro league, but there is work to be done, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Leclerc playing field, and no other constituency has justified in sports development the upgrade of the football field than, Le than the Leclerc playing field, Mr. Speaker. This is a story of a community that went from the bottom of football, the bottom tier, won the bottom tier, got into the top tier, and within two years, won the national football competition, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have to provide that assistance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Wen playing field, Mr. Speaker, is an area where some of our best cricketers come from, including the likes of Gary Mafre and Darren Sami. And so this year, we'll continue to ensure that the lighting is installed and the proper sitting and change room for these individuals. And Mr. Speaker, in Denry South, with the likes of Rita Stanislas playing semi-pro around the world, Mr. Speaker, with the likes of former players like Sabatas Hunt, Mr. Speaker, with the likes of ensuring that this community that always, like the Mabia Valley and Sufre, comes out in support of their athletes, this year is the year for their stands and change room to finally be erected, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we know that we have requests for the Bexor playing field, we have requests, Mr. Speaker, for continued upgrades to the Sufre Mini Stadium. Mr. Speaker, the lighting that was promised to the Cicero playing field that was erected on a pole, we are giving them a proper facility this year, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would like to come in this honorable house and announce that every single facility will be fixed. 
But my mother didn't raise me that way. <laughs> we had to speak the truth. 140 courts, 90 playing fields. Sports requires total communal commitment for its development. We need to play our part in maintaining and upgrading facilities in this country. It cannot only be the ministry and SSI and the MP to do something, to pick up a rick, a cutlass, to help out with our facilities, Mr. Speaker. But we will do our absolute best, Mr. Speaker. And so, the people from Vanna that have been calling me day and night about the court, I say to you, relax. The member for ancillary canneries calls me more, Mr. Speaker. And they will be getting the attention, Mr. Speaker, the attention that they need. And so, Mr. Speaker, while I push through, and uh, of course, I believe in a lot of discussion for the policy debate, we as a ministry, we've invested over the last year into creating history. For the first time, we had Highland Champs on a weekend in this great country, Mr. Speaker. At the Sufre Mini Stadium, more than 8,000 people in attendance, Mr. Speaker. For the first time in our history, we launched a semi-professional football league for our young men, Mr. Speaker. For the first time in our history, Mr. Speaker, we opened a high-performance center for cricket development, Mr. Speaker. The best cricketers in high performance, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to work for the first time a 100% solar lit facility is erected in this country, Mr. Speaker, and that is at the Corinth playing field, Mr. Speaker. And so, that's the constituency of Grosley. I look forward to our grand opening in the month of April, Mr. Speaker. And so, while we transition Grosley into a mini stadium, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to ensure that the pie is spread through the length and breadth of this country, Mr. Speaker. And that is how you establish sports development. The National Aquatic Center, Mr. Speaker, for the first time in our history, a 50 meter pool in the OECS established for high performance training in the sport of swimming. And Mr. Speaker, if you have not heard, there was a government that came into this honorable house, promised to remove, to reduce, and eventually remove that, Mr. Speaker. And we waited six years, and it never happened. But a government of the St. Lucia Labour Party, under the champion from Castries East, made the bold decision and removed that from all the sporting equipment for our young people, Mr. Speaker. And so, we saw from our previous budget line, $200,000 for the transition of Julian Alfred from a collegiate athlete into a professional. Mr. Speaker, we provided the support to her, Mr. Speaker. Mental training and physiotherapy and psychology, Mr. Speaker. And all her practice and gym, Mr. Speaker. And for the first time in our history, a St. Lucian from Cicero, champion of the 60 meter sprint of the world, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to do our best to ensure that our athletes get the attention and we continue to press ahead with the work of our people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to move quickly to the budget that, we, that is before us and how this budget really impacts the lives of the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. When you dive into this budget, you will realize, Mr. Speaker, that the efforts of the member for Castries South in tourism is really yielding huge results, huge results for the people of St. Lucia. And Mr. Speaker, under 46, subsection 0043, Mr. Speaker, under the ORTCP, we see a line item of over $2 million, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, last year in the community of Grosley, this year, Mr. Speaker, we saw under this line the official groundbreaking ceremony for the Grosley Recreational Park, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, an attempt was made to sneak this project in before the last election. Mr. Speaker, we saw, woke up one morning and all of a sudden we saw a structure 
on Pigeon Island, Mr. Speaker. Brief investigation revealed to us no DCA approval, no planning approval, no pro pro proper procurement done, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before we even got in, materials that were purchased had gone missing from this facility, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, the little boy from Maritere Street, Grosley, born and raised on Bay Street, where it has been erected, when he was elected by the people, ensured that we had DCA approval, planning approval, all approvals, Mr. Speaker, a proper tender process, a procurement process, Mr. Speaker, undertaken, launching a search of materials missing, and those materials most found, Mr. Speaker. And so, a contractor identified after a competitive bidding process, Mr. Speaker, and the project has commenced in earnest, no pun intended. The project has commenced in earnest, Mr. Speaker. The project is going well, Mr. Speaker. And I invite anybody, when you go to Guru's Day Friday night, just pass through Pigeon Point and see the great progress when it is done properly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are hoping to complete this by July, August this year, and open it up to a few vendors for employment opportunities, we're hoping to host some events at this venue, including weddings, social events, and of course, in the future, jazz events. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Jerome Montoot Road is in pristine condition, thanks to the member from Castries North. I'm coming to that, Mr. Speaker. Very good road, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we see under community tourism, Mr. Speaker, a continued thrust to bring touristic activities in our community. And last year, Mr. Speaker, we had our historic Moshi music or Creole, Moshi jazz, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this event was never held under the previous administration. It started under this government, Mr. Speaker, previous government, honorable member for Sufre, ensured that it was done at a high level and stopped for almost six years. And it took the government of this St. Lucia Labour Party to bring it back, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thousands attended, Mr. Speaker. It's a free show. Vendors sold out all their drinks in record time. And of course, other commercial businesses saw upticks in their activities, Mr. Speaker. And so, this year, we have in Moshi Jazz again, Mr. Speaker. People are already telling me Moshi Topi T. But we are having Moshi Jazz again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year we are bringing in a French band, Mr. Speaker. And when we talk about community tourism, Mr. Speaker, we see so many individuals already booking Airbnbs in the communities of Grosile, Lafay, Moshi, Kaimaje, in anticipation of Moshi Jazz, Mr. Speaker. Boats will be coming across, Mr. Speaker. We'll also be having DYP, Mr. Speaker. Impulse ban, Mr. Speaker, of what service. Mr. Speaker, it's a free show. I invite you, Mr. Speaker, to come in early. We invite everybody to leave home early because of the traffic. But we commence at 7 p.m. We will have parking for the Speaker, Mr. Speaker, and the AG and everybody. So we will be good, Mr. Speaker. This year, it will be bigger and even better, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I go through this budget, Mr. Speaker, that I so richly endorse under the Ministry of Infrastructure, I would not doubt that every single MP went to those line items first. But I will say for me, I will confess that the desire, the hunger for infrastructural projects, Mr. Speaker, is insatiable in the constituency of Grosley. And so, Mr. Speaker, as much as sometimes I am considered avaricious because they see things happen in my constituency, it is because I have no choice, Mr. Speaker, given the dynamics of this blossoming constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the financial year 2023-2024, I must say that the Ministry of Infrastructure has provided support to the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. For those who insist on saying this is happening in Grosley and not other areas, let me provide you with some context, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this country has over 100,000 vehicles, Mr. Speaker. Over 100,000 vehicles. 
On this island, almost 90% of them would traverse the Grosley constituency at some point on a monthly basis, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this constituency has the highest level of migration. So more construction is expected. Heavy equipment on our roads, Mr. Speaker. It has the highest level of economic activity. More businesses setting up. More pressure on the roads in the constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's more traffic. There's more demand. There's more settlements and therefore more need for more roads, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, given that Grosley has the highest population, Mr. Speaker, and the continued shifting, Mr. Speaker, there's more demand. And so, we have seen some interventions on our roads in Grosley. I have to say a special thank you to the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Infrastructure, along with a Chief Engineer, Renata, who has been very, very, very patient with the amount of calls that these individuals get daily from my phone. Amount of calls. As long as they call me, and I guarantee you, I filled many, many calls, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we were able to do the Kazaba Road, Mr. Speaker. Complete the Kazaba Road, a road for 40 years people have been asking for. We were able to do many of the roads, Mr. Speaker, in Beau And it's still ongoing because, Mr. Speaker, again, high population movement, high individuals moving out and constructing away from main roads, and more demand and more demand for some intervention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have commenced work on emerald development, Mr. Speaker, in the community of Corinth. And Mr. Speaker, almost every single parliamentarian came to me at some point and said to me, Parliamentary Rep for Grosley, I am not from your constituency, but you need to do something about emerald development, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we've commenced that road, and we are hoping that it will be complete within the next two weeks, Mr. Speaker. Corinth Road, Mr. Speaker, a concrete road, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that is another road that people were clamoring for for a very long time, Mr. Speaker. Did it under CDP, Mr. Speaker? I have to identify where I do some of my roads because we have to get infrastructure with everything. Mr. Speaker, another road that has been requested for many years, Mr. Speaker, the link road between Norbe and Asu Canal, Mr. Speaker. That is a road that people were asking for for a very long time. And with the traffic to and from Castries, we have finally gotten this road done, Mr. Speaker, for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. This is a road that is for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Asu Canal, stairs and footpath, Mr. Speaker, Another area where we have high instances of the elderly requiring some footpath, some stairs to access their homes, Mr. Speaker. Complete, Mr. Speaker. Viking Traders Road and Drain, Mr. Speaker. Another area, Mr. Speaker, after the flood of November 6, the residents were really nervous about an incident like this. And so we built a proper drain and a proper road for these individuals, Mr. Speaker. Lawi, the, 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 the Marisil Road, Mr. Speaker, and the many others that are too numerous for me to mention, given the fact that I have to be complete in an hour, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> but so, the people of Grosley have no doubt that they've elected a worker, Mr. Speaker. They've not elected a UWP, but they've elected a worker not a joker, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you have a constituency the size of Grosley, you must hit the ground, the ground running early. And that is what I did, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to the year of infrastructure proposed by this Minister of Finance. And so, Mr. Speaker, on page 631, under reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, we are certainly hoping to get some interventions in communities such as Labon, where we have free critical roads that are absolutely necessary. Degazor, five major roads. Inglewood, 
which has a loop in dire need of attention and any time I can take it on a tour. Monsepa, four roads needed. Monye, ten roads needed. Piat, five, including the worst road in Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Asu Canal, four. Corinth, 15, Mr. Speaker. Marisil, top of the world in that area. Seven, of which we are going to start one very soon, Mr. Speaker. Bordewash, Tuya, Rejri, five. Sugar City, Rejri, Monjiro, six. Lafay, Kaimaje, four. Riviamita, Tito Fair, six. Deramo, Monsito, four. Moshi, New Development, Ravin, Magwetut, nine. Rodney Bay, five. Bonte, five. Boseju, five. Kazaba, five. Cape State, Massad, 15 roads, over 100 roads in the constituency of Grosley being asked and pressured for. Mr. Speaker, the people of Grosley will not get them all. They will never get them all, Mr. Speaker. That is an absolute fact. But it's incumbent upon me as the parliamentary rep to stand here today and express to them what the realities are. Because many of them believe that their road is the only road. And to be honest, I understand with them. The families come, the friends come. Sometimes it's embarrassing, shocks destroyed. But we've measured and costed over 100 roads in dire need of interventions in the constituency of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. I challenge anyone at any time to go to any of these roads that I mentioned and justify it not being done, any time. And Mr. Speaker, we will not do all. But with this parliamentary rep, we will try our best to do as many as possible, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, of particular interest to the people of Grosley coming out of this budget is found under 0504, the rehabilitation of the Julian Hunt Highway, Mr. Speaker. This is a highway, Mr. Speaker, that is not going to be done solely for the people of Grosley. This is a highway that is needed by the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, for productivity, Mr. Speaker, for enhancement and development, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, a budget of 8.3, I know, is a drop in the budget, in the bucket, as we hope to bring some light to this road, Mr. Speaker. We know what happened, Mr. Speaker. An agreement, a loan identified with the Kuwaiti government. And of course, when a previous government came in, he couldn't touch it, couldn't manipulate it. The party's affair and AAP, so you're just Tiwela. And so, six years, we waited until the final year, an intervention suggested in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker. And now, Mr. Speaker, we have to do what we need to do for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Still under Ministry of Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, under 0289, there's an estimate of $3 million under rivers and water costs maintenance. The people of Grosley desperately need some assistance. This is why I'm very happy that the Minister of Finance indicated that this year of infrastructure is not just for roads, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have addressed a few river courses that were problematic after November 6, including, Mr. Speaker, Piat retaining wall, the Monier drain, Inglewood's drains that we've, we've commenced, and of course the Viking traders as we spoke about earlier. But Mr. Speaker, we have a scary situation, Mr. Speaker. Scary. And anybody, anybody who witnessed what happened on November 6 knows that this is indeed a scary situation, Mr. Speaker. In Flamboyant Drive, where the river, Mr. Speaker, on that day, we saw water over houses, Mr. Speaker. And so, up till this day, this river and waterway still requires some level of attention. We have houses that are compromised in the Flamboyant Drive area, Mr. Speaker. In Granivier, near Rainbow 2000, similar situation, need for retaining walls, Mr. Speaker. Grand Riviere, Corinth, near Wilmer's Bar. Similar situation. Very desperate situation where the river is very close to houses, Mr. Speaker. Piat, near the Nazarene Church, Mr. Speaker. We've started some intervention there, but we need to continue that into where Get Through lives and the surrounding community, Mr. Speaker. Inglewood, Mr. Speaker. 
Corinth near the Samsons, Mr. Speaker. Corinth behind John Michel, Mr. Speaker. Another scary area from November 6th. The water came into most of those houses, Mr. Speaker. We know that gas road, Mr. Speaker. The bridge is now woefully inadequate. The Bois Bridge area, Mr. Speaker. Bonte, Tuya, Riviermita, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, this year must be the year where we, as much as possible, allay the fears of these people in these communities. Still traumatized, still calling my phone when it rains heavily to say to me, Mr. Parliamentary Rep, don't forget us. We need some intervention, Mr. Speaker. And so, in addition to this, Mr. Speaker, under 0456, we see an estimate of $1 million for slope stabilization and retaining walls. We're certainly hoping that these areas can be given some attention, and we'll be counting on this for these areas that are desperate, extremely dangerous. Some of the areas, such as Bonte, Mr. Speaker, we have a balcony on the Bonte Road that they narrowed down. Another very scary area that we need some slope stabilization. Lafay, near the Adventist Church as well, on the opposite side of the, the Adventist Church, and of course, Asu Canal, some slope civilization. Mr. Speaker, under 505 road safety, we see an amount of $200,000 estimated. Mr. Speaker, in my two and a half years in this position, I've had major challenges as it pertains to road safety, Mr. Speaker. Many calls about animals being killed, in Flamboyant Drive, in um, Winwood Island Gas Road because of speeding. And we really need to have a discussion on how it is we move forward as it pertains to sleeping policemen and some form of an activity to discourage speeding. But we've seen motorists being very irresponsible. The national discourse may come, but the people of Grosley need speed bumps. And so, I've commenced in ensuring that some of our areas get those speed bumps. The Widow Island Gas Road, we ensured that we erected one here, in fact two, and we're going to continue to be very considerate given the realities of traffic in the north. But we've requested speed bumps for the Monsepa area, the Widow Island Gas Road, done, Vesiqui, Grosley Town, Riviamita, Mr. Speaker, Bonte and Corinth. Mr. Speaker, we were able to get some um, other interventions done in other areas and have some community meetings with regards to speeding. And so we're hoping that as we go forward that we can have a full-fledged program for the entire island and we can see what we can do about irresponsible driving. Mr. Speaker, under physical development and urban renewal, under 050, we see an estimate of $7.5 million for land administration. Mr. Speaker, the people of Monsepa will be smiling. As I remember during the election campaign of 2021, the now Prime Minister visited the people of Monsepa and assured them that they will be given opportunity to obtain the land. And this is not power, GT. But the time has come. I am very happy, Mr. Speaker, with the work of Terence Sinclair and his crew, and of course, the Honorable Member for Castries North, who have commenced the works to rationalize these areas for the people of Montsepa, and it's coming soon, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we saw during the year electricity and pole lighting recommence, Mr. Speaker. We had a constituency with a large population with a large amount of dark spots, and I'm grateful that the Ministry of Infrastructure have commenced some work and the work continues as we bring Grosley back to light, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under national security, we know all too well, and I've given all the anecdotes of what the population of Grosley can be on a weekend. Population way beyond 45,000 already in terms of um, people, and the influx of workers, the influx of tourists, the influx of individuals coming in, can well exceed over 60,000 on a weekend. For some reason, Mr. Speaker, a plan to establish a Grosley Northern headquarter was squashed under the previous administration. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to announce that under this government that the work has commenced and is continuing in earnest at the Grosley Northern headquarters, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, 
I was buoyed when I went to this facility and I saw more than 20 young men engaged in work, Mr. Speaker. These were 20 young men who could have given, been given this opportunity under the previous administration. But for some reason, you party sa touche, you mete a su kote, Mr. Speaker. But this government is working to get it done for the people. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Equity, Social Transformation, we as a government continue to work to develop the social fabric of our society. And in the case of Gross Day, we continue to provide support to a number of programs in this constituency. On page 647, 404, Rehabilitation of Community Centers, we see a line item for the Gross Day Human Resource Development of $12,000. And I'm happy that we continue our social programming in this community center. We are hoping that we get some support for the Lafay Mothers and Fathers Hall, the Rivemita Mothers and Fathers Hall, and of course, we continue to work on establishing the, growth, the Grand River Community Center. Mr. Speaker, we continue to push some of our programs under the Ministry of Equity with our very capable, very capable social transformation officer, David Franks and Moise. And we continue to ensure that we can do more. We have a Music and Me program. We have a dance program. And Mr. Speaker, we have a peanut butter pantry at the HRDC that continues to provide breakfast for young children who are on their way to school, Mr. Speaker, the grossly primary infant that may not have a can of tuna fish, bag of salt fish, of, of, of crackers, any other system, a tin of milk, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we will be coming in collaboration with RISE to the Ministry of Equity for some funds because this has blossomed into a national project, Mr. Speaker. We have individuals from as far as Monrepo, Labri, um, Deramo, Deriso, coming to the pantry, Mr. Speaker, on their way to Grosely. And of course, Mr. Speaker, we cannot turn them away. And so we will be engaging the Ministry of Equity under some of the funds and some of the activities we see for some assistance with this peanut butter pantry, Mr. Speaker. It's needed. I want to say congratulations to Venus Cherry and his team for continuing to push and to get finances from all walks of life to ensure that this pantry is put together, Mr. Speaker. Under 57057, we certainly hope we can get to implement some after-school programs for our young people in other communities, communities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year, we are also hoping to launch our Youth in Agriculture program at the Grand Riviere Primary School. And we've already commenced some clearing, some work with the individuals from the school, the principal, and of course, the custodian at the school. And we are hoping that we can get some assistance from the Ministry of Equity and the Ministry of Agriculture to have a comprehensive program, a Youth in Agriculture program at the Grand River Primary School. We continue to work with the Ministry of Social Transformation for the area M Act for the community courts and ICT center in Labon because this community absolutely deserves it. Mr. Speaker, we are also able to give, under the Ministry of Equity, some financial support through the Flow Bundle Program for those communities, Mr. Speaker, that did not have access to the internet, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to know how much time I have left. 18 minutes. We carry on nicely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, page 643 under 0366, 0336, National Housing Assistant Program. Mr. Speaker, I have one of my co-workers in the building today, Kelly Pierre-Louis. She's in the gallery. And for some people, they've seen different individuals act and function in that position at my office simply because the influx of people who go to my constituency office on a daily basis and on a Wednesday, Mr. Speaker, it's almost unbearable to so many. It is absolutely unfair what is compensation, given the fact, the pressure that she would face would be four times more than any other constituency. But Mr. Speaker, one of the areas that provide a lot of pressure for my constituency office 
is this housing assistance program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have currently over 700 applications at our office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that we informed each individual that we'll only provide an assistance up to about 5,000, Mr. Speaker, we have invoices, Mr. Speaker, of over $1.1 million in requests at our office, Mr. Speaker. It should be no surprise. No surprise given the dynamics of Grosley. And they come into the office like you have a poison. They want it now, Mr. Speaker. It's a lot of pressure. But I'm happy that I have staff that could keep calm, Mr. Speaker, and ask our people to be patient. From the 700, we've only been able to assist 89, Mr. Speaker. 89 checks have been issued. And we continue to beg for patience as this program continues to unfold. This is the difficulty with this constituency. But Mr. Speaker, I must pause to say that I absolutely love my job, Mr. Speaker. I absolutely enjoy serving the people of Grosley. Despite the pressures, if I open phone, Lee. Despite the pressures, Mevini, Ipate La. Despite the pressures, I went to his mother on Maritere Street and I told his mother to call him. And despite the pressures, I enjoy serving the people of Grosley. I genuinely love the people of Grosley. And so I can say to them that despite of the fact that we have 600 and almost 20 applications left, be patient. We are working to assist you, Mr. Speaker. This is because the impression is that Grosley is fine because when you drive the road, you only see big houses. But the sum total of plywood houses in Grosley far exceeds many constituencies, Mr. Speaker. And so the pressures are there, but I'm not going to crumble under pressure. I'm going to smile, wake up every morning, and work on behalf of the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under subsection 318, Municipal Administrative Town and Vigit Councils, Mr. Speaker, we see an allocation of $3 million. And we're certainly hoping that another entity I feel sorry for daily is our town council, Mr. Speaker. The pressure in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker, to clean it up. The pressure. Mr. Speaker, it's not just a town council anymore. It's the Grosley Constituency Council which includes Moshi, Deramo, Labon, Grand Rivier, Mornier, all these places, Rivier Mitton, and the likes, Mr. Speaker. I feel sorry for my council, Mr. Speaker, because of the pressure that they have to bear, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member from Viewfort South is not there, but Viewfort South has double the council workers as Grosley, Mr. Speaker. And Grosley has three times the population, Mr. Speaker. This must be rectified, Mr. Speaker, somehow, because I get calls daily from the member from Castries South, who is the Minister of Tourism, Minister Rodney Bay. Minister, Mr. what's happening in Rodney Bay? What's happening on the main road? He, he, and he also calls us a constituent, by the way. But the pressure, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so I'm glad to see $3 million allocated, and we can have a plan forward. I'm very grateful to the member for Central Castries and local government who has provided additional assistance to us last year. We're eternally grateful, but again, again, it's not going to ever be enough. And so whatever we can get additional, we'll appreciate it. Mr. Speaker, under 404 Community Development Services, Mr. Speaker, the Grand Riviere Community Center has commenced, Mr. Speaker. I'm very happy, Mr. Speaker, that this area and here we see a design of it, erected very near the field. We will be fixing the court. We have some developments of crown lands in that area. And of course, the field is earmarked for some lighting. And so the community of Grand Riviere, under this parliamentary rep, will never be the same, Mr. Speaker. We are transforming lives, Mr. Speaker, in this community. Mr. Speaker, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries on page 626. I'm smiling because the member of Denrisov always smiles. And so I'm joining him in smiling when we see an allocation of $850,000 for repairs to fishing ports. 
I've been asking and I'll ask again. The fishermen of Grosely are tired of the rust. They are tired and they need some assistance. I'm internally grateful for the fads that has been provided by the ministry, fish aggregating devices. And I must say you learn a lot when you become a, a minister that this device is so appreciated by the fishermen. And so I thank the Ministry of Fisheries, but we need some upgrade to that infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, in Granivere, Youthing Agriculture Program is coming. Mr. Speaker, I'm indeed impressed with the work on stream for the constituency of Grosley in the financial year at our learning institutions. Mr. Speaker, on page 649, line item 215, Plant and Equipment Unit, National Infrastructure Maintenance under the Ministry of Education. I look forward to some assistance to Grand River Primary School and the Moshi Primary School because some much needed attention is definitely called for. I appreciate some of the work that has been done in most of these schools, but for sure, I will be bothering the member for cash for Denry North as he continues to help me carry on in this constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the teachers and the principals of these schools, they continue to call, and I'm happy that we have an estimated $14.1 million for some repairs to schools. Mr. Speaker, under the same ministry, Grosley Library, I am eternally thankful to the honorable member for Denry North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you have a cabinet, of people who understand the development thrust of young people. And you sit in that cabinet, Mr. Speaker, you go home and you say, thank you, Lord. As a former minister for youth development and sports, as a former educator, the member for Denry North said, it is unconscionable that the Grosley Library was closed for years under the previous administration that it was unbelievable that this library in the most populous constituency was not available to young people for a critical aspect of reading. And they blame everything on this current administration when it comes to youth development, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am eternally thankful to the Honorable Minister after years of years the Grosley Library will be reopening in the coming weeks, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very happy that these people will get the opportunity to read in the privacy of a library, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and the Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, I am indeed thankful to the member for Viewfort North for the efforts placed into developing the health infrastructure of the most populous constituency on island. I often explain that on a weekend, the sum total of people in Grosley far exceeds the population of St. Kitts. I'm happy I needed water so I can pause. The sum total of people living in a Grosley constituency on a weekend far exceeds the population of the entire St. Kitts. I challenge anybody to say other words. Thankfully, with this Minister of Health, despite the Grosley Polyclinic not having an ambulance for the entire five years of the previous administration. Hey. The Grosley Polyclinic did not have an ambulance before the people chanted baby for Grosley, Mr. Speaker. They did not have an ambulance available to them, Mr. Speaker. And under this Minister of Health, the Grosley people can breathe again, literally. Mr. Speaker, and so I'm glad that we're able to provide an ambulance to the nurses and doctors, Mr. Speaker. Additional transportation to move specimens, Mr. Speaker, at the Grosley Polyclinic. And so on the page 652, line item 0279, Health System Strengthening Project, I'm hoping to see work commence on the extension of the Grosley Polyclinic. The nurses continue to be patient as they ask for basic facilities like a simple lunchroom, Mr. Speaker, as they continue to work under tremendous pressure, especially on a Friday, Mr. Speaker. 
And so, we're certainly hoping that under this line item, the people of Grosley can count on the Grosley Polyclinic, Mr. Speaker. And so, I am very confident, Mr. Speaker, very confident that this year will be a better year for the people of Grosley. 2023 was tough, but we braved the toughness, Mr. Speaker. The year 2023, 2024, that budget year, it brought in significant amounts of progress in this country. When we came in in 2021, we were faced with a fiscal crisis that required us to tighten our belts and to make huge sacrifices on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Mr. Speaker, in the fiscal year... Ten minutes left. I'm wrapping up, Mr. Speaker. I'll leave down out. Mr. Speaker, in the fiscal year 2023-2024, in the fiscal year 2023-2024, I was absolutely astonished. And I think all of us who sat here and listened to that figure had a moment of reflection, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister announced that under 2023-2024, we paid $106 million in DFCs, Mr. Speaker. $106 million. And so when I go to the constituency of Grosley, and people have conversations by the football field, and by the beach, and Bay Street, and Seaview, and I hear certain individuals from times past beat their chests about roads they constructed. This is the government that is paying for these roads, Mr. Speaker. This is the government. So when they take credit, Mr. Speaker, it's almost like saying, I left you with a heavy debt, and then there's an individual paying that debt, and you beat your chest for leaving a heavy debt, Mr. Speaker. Let me explain that to the people of Grosley. They came in, Mr. Speaker, and they took roads on credit, Mr. Speaker. A lot of the roads in the meetings they speak of, these roads are being paid under the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. So when they take credit for it, I go and I said, we are the ones paying for it, Mr. Speaker. And so we do not have the best health and uh, Mr. Speaker, we do not have the best security system in our country. And so when I hear some of the discourse about a health and security levy that we as a government have put in place to move these very two institutions forward, I marvel, Mr. Speaker. From a levy, I'll say it again, this government collected only $18 million, while the total cost of health and security amounts to, under the previous financial year, more than $275 million, Mr. Speaker. We collected $18 million. Mr. Speaker, this year, we are projected to collect $35 million to cushion the projected cost of $350 million that we need for health and security. So, Speaker, why do some feel the need to play politics? Why do they feel the need to play politics with the reality that befalls us when it comes to health and security in this country? I want to say to the young people of this country, there is no such thing as a free lunch, Mr. Speaker. Because we see permeating for our communities this feeling of entitlement sometimes and that you can just get this without any cost. The reality of development is that we must have some form of resource mobilization. And I say to young people, a mobilization of $45 million to cushion $350 million is well worth the cost. Do not let them kidnap your minds. 
Do not let them fool you on Instagram, on Facebook, with the flashing mirrors, and the rides behind pickup trucks, Mr. Speaker. In the hot sun, Mr. Speaker. Do not let them come to you and tell you how your future should go. Simply because this current government understands fiscal responsibility, Mr. Speaker. Member for so, Mr. In the Speaker, cool, in the coolness of this chamber, you have five minutes left. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let me once again thank the people of Grosley. Let me go back to them for their support and patience with this government. We are not perfect. We continue to work hard. In Grosley, we recently completed, as I said, the footpath, the Nassau Canal, the Marcel Road, the peanut butter pantry is there. We end in period poverty. We've been hosting community block meetings so that we can serve you better, Mr. Speaker. Whether it's under a bus shop, a bus stop, under street light, Mr. Speaker, whether it is in a school, community center, we've been hosting those meetings to hear from you. I look forward to continuing to connect with everyone, labor, Flabo, and of course, in the case of Grosley, PIP, Party in Power, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to working with black, white, Asian, Latino, Arab, Bantu. I look forward to connecting with all of you, Mr. Speaker. Let's work together. Let's work together to ensure Grosley remains the best, most progressive constituency in the entire OECS, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, I hereby support the estimates of revenue and expenditure for this fiscal year 2024-2025. I thank you.